What's going on YouTube? Today we're taking a look at a pretty special knife. Uh, this is a Shirogorov Stellaris. Now um, I want to reiterate here this is a very casual conversation and that I will be showing you a knife. I would be doing this conversation just like we'd be having at a coffee shop, taking a look at things I like about it, things I don't like about it, and kind of everything in between. Um, these tend to be a little longer in nature and uh, you know if you're interested in the knife itself you know I could see how um, you'd probably really appreciate it. So we're gonna start talking about this and kind of review it, go over some of the specs and discuss it. So let's get started. Um, for those of you who are living under a rock uh, this is a custom division knife from Shirogorov. A custom division knife is a little bit different than their standard production line in that they come with uh, this little certificate and apparently a packet of salt. Uh, this little certificate in here in that uh, they're numbered knives. Uh, so Stellaris CD, this is number 25 of 50. Uh, this is made in 2022 and I believe February if I'm guessing. That's probably what that O2 means. And uh, what the custom division is from Shirogorov is it's a knife made by one person. And, uh, you know, actually, you know what? Why don't I show this, uh, this little card on the back here? It's often overlooked. But inside the box, uh, next to this little card, if it wants to pop out, it actually comes with a nice little overview of the knife itself, which uh, not a lot of people get to see. So if you want to pause and take a look at that, that's cool. Um, obviously it's in uh, Russian, so I don't know how much you're going to read on that. But if you have Google Translate, there's that cool little thing underneath. And then the card itself, um, it's got this kind of cool textured papery raised emblem. And then custom vision, or as, uh, as I call it, CD. I'm sure you could come up with some other cool acronyms for that, like cash um, disposal, maybe. That'd be nice. Cash disposal. Cash, what's the word I'm looking for? And it doesn't matter. Let's talk about the knife. We're three minutes in and I'm not even showing the knife, so I apologize on that. So this guy is a, a carbo tie, carbon fiber handle, show side as well as uh, non-show side here, or clip side. Now, when they say carbo tie, you think carbo, carbon, and tie, titanium. But the two of them blended together, you kind of get this gorgeous uh, look on the scales here, where there's like flakes of titanium metal engraved into the titan or into the carbon fiber that really gives it a unique look. And my, uh, my office here is set up very flat for lighting, so you're not gonna get a ton of reflection on this, but uh, if you take this outside, and you put this in the sun, you would see exactly what I'm talking about. It's very loud, very bright, very reflective, very chameleon-esque type vibe, which looks terrific. On the blade, we've got a Damasteel blade, which is, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of times people confuse this with kind of like a gas station vibe. But I can assure you, this is uh, the furthest thing from a gas station. In fact, um, they're probably worth more than some of the cars filling up at the gas station, which is kind of funny in itself. But it is rolled and looks absolutely terrific. And the detail work on this Damasteel blade goes right through to the top here, as you can see. You can see all that beautiful material right through on the jimping as well. Hopefully they can pick that up. And then as well, on the actual tab itself, the flipper tab. You should be able to see that, hopefully. But uh, all that detail right through the knife is just terrific. Now, feeling one of these, I, I've got uh, lots of different sure go offs that I will compare it with in this video. I've got a half battery in the camera, so that uh, should give me tons of time. But I will compare it with some Shiro's, we'll compare it with some uh, other knives. Um, I want to get this point across before we go down the road of comparison. This does not compare 
in any way to a production shear bar off. Fit and finish is substantially increased. Tolerances are much tighter throughout the knife. And um, attention to detail is just much higher. And it's the kind of thing where you're not going to get this in a video on YouTube like this. You're not going to really see these little things where if I say, um, you know, the uh, little things like this little uh, push button here to disengage the blade. Most people would look at that right here and say, oh, that's just, you know, it's, it's beveled off. It's beautiful. But it's actually micro milled to the point where you can hardly see it unless you get right up in it and look at it with some light and uh, and you, you you pick up on it and go, oh my goodness, the milling lines are just ridiculous. Um, roller bearings, obviously. It's uh, it's running on rollers and, and all the custom division knives, except for, there's a few exceptions, um, are on roller bearings. Now, roller bearings, for those who don't understand, um, rather than a ball, a ball bearing on a ball track, right? It's, uh, think of it as like a needle bearing where it's like a, Think of it as like a pin, right? Like a, a knitting pin on its side and it's rolling, it's like a finger, right? So much longer bearing. With that, you get increased surface area. Um, it's a little bit harder to kind of keep perfect, but when you have great tolerances um, you, and, and execute it well, it, the feel is uh, indescribable, absolutely indescribable um, on that blade. Um, anyway, it is a mid-size Shirogorov, and uh, with that, I guess I should get into the measurements. Uh, some people really like to have numbers, um, to the point where I had one fella comment wanting to know if something was within one millimeter of another measurement, and I don't really understand that, but that's cool. Um, claimed it's three and a half inches of cutting edge. Uh, yeah, I, I could kind of see that. It's a little more, I'd say. Um, you know, three and five eighths, I'd say 3.6, something like that. Uh, and then to the actual hand or to the edge of the handle, uh, three and three quarters type thing. Overall length, eight and a quarter, uh, hair over eight and a quarter, perhaps, uh, in that kind of range. The handle's actually uh, got a good length to it for a, I'd say, like a size large hand or medium, medium large. Extra large is starting to get. Uh, well, I've got extra large, and let's be honest, there's still room on that handle. It fits like a glove, as OJ would say. Um, Comparison-wise, in size, let's grab a sure gore off uh, Neon Zero, which is a special edition, this guy, particularly from uh, Walter Randolph. We will compare it with a Turtle. Uh, F95, there you go, and let's shuffle this guy around to kind of give you a really good idea of size. And remember, the angle of the camera and the angle of the knives aren't exactly conducive to their true size. And we have a 111, which is a 111 mil blade, which should give you a pretty good size comparison through the Shirograph lineup from Neon to Stellaris to F95. This is kind of your standard Neon F95. These are your two standard sizes that everybody seems to love. Um, neon being the smaller of the two and my extra large hand can fit that no problem. I still have some, uh, some room to go, but uh, I will have to do a video on that knife. Very cool. Um, so the, the Stellaris is uh, in the same size family as the Stellar, which came first. Um, and that is a full tie version with a few, um, it's, let's say it's the first gen version of this. So it's a uh, full tie, but it definitely has a few things that some people leave to be desired that they've made some improvements on on this knife, which I'll talk about. In terms of, if we're looking at the full F95, comparing it with the Stellaris, the handles are very similar in size. You notice that? Very, very similar, just with a shorter blade. Which makes this a very carryable knife. It is uh, right around three ounces, which is incredible for this blade size and this, this, uh, this style of knife, 
being in roller bearings, being in carbo tie, it is stunning. Uh, a couple other comparisons we will do uh, with some Chris Reeves. I know everybody likes to know the Chris Reeve. So we've got a Thunderbird gear, a large Sabenza, which is a nice little size comparison. I believe I've got a small Sabenza here as well, if you want to see that. There you have it. So there's a good size comparison. So more, more in tune with the size large Sabenza, which is Goldilocks in my opinion. Um, anything else that I would kind of match it with uh, that I have available today, we could do a Brown Knives Mini FSD, which is also very cool. A Brown Knives FSD large uh, in that size, also a very cool blade. It's a nice little reflection going on in the bottom knife, and I apologize on that, but it might kind of mess the camera up searching for ISO settings. Um, so there you have it. There's a, oh, and one more knife I like to... No, I don't have it. Sorry, bug out. I uh, don't have my bug out. It's actually in my pants upstairs. But we will do a PM2, which is uh, also a good comparison. People know the size on that. And uh, very easily identifiable for the size in the holding and the width and the clip and whatnot. So there you go. That is just on hand right now beside me. Uh, funny, fun fact about me as well, uh, if you don't know me, um, I actually tend to not carry almost all of my knives, um, other than maybe around the house here and there, but uh, for the actual users, I tend to use uh, very low-end knives, which is kind of funny, and uh, I'm working on it. Um, I am working on that. Um, so some fun facts and details on this that we may not know. Um, the detail level is absolutely through the roof. So these, uh, the carbo tie, the carbon fiber scales, um, a few things that they've made some changes on. So one, um, we have the Sheer Gwarf logo now. Um, I can only assume that this is uh, epoxied in, not just pressed, but I'm assuming there's some kind of bonding. Uh, we have a captive pivot system on the hardware here, which is uh, tremendous, uh, which is uh, easier seen than explained, but basically means that this will not move around. Um, we've got this gorgeous backspacer here that is just, uh, it, it matches all the hardware so well. Uh, just beautiful work on that, and that is hard to show. Uh, just a stunning backspacer there. Looks beautiful. Uh, the pocket clip. What more can we say about this pocket clip? Uh, it is a thing of beauty as well. Very delicate, nice swoop down, and then that duck bill back up. Just a beautiful pocket clip. Then there's additional milling on the carbon around it to make this nice little pocket. Um, yeah, the, the one thing I'll say about this that is so difficult to showcase here is how much milling is actually done on carbon fiber because I feel like carbon um, actually kind of acts as a little bit of camouflage to a lot of the work that's done. But all this milling, all this rolled surface work how smooth and flat it is up top and then how it rolls downhill all around in all these different spots and on the edges, the chamfering, it's just stunning, absolutely stunning. And, uh, and with that, like I said, you know, you get these little pockets underneath the clip so your pants have a place to go, just beautiful. Um, as well, on the edge here, I was talking earlier about this nice little pushed in spot or sorry, this epoxy sure golf logo, my understanding is they used to actually kind of carve that into the uh, into the carbon, which I, I guess could look all right. I don't have any examples of that. Uh, is that 111 like that? Uh, no, it's on the blade. I don't have any carbon fiber examples of that. I do have a magnetic on the way, so I don't know if that's any different, but um, I'll have to show that. Um, I just think that looks so much classier, having that little logo there on the... Uh, right epoxy in. I think that looks so sharp. Uh, you can obviously run with a uh, lanyard on here if you want to. Um, I'm not a big lanyard guy. Um, if I was to make a suggestion on this knife, I wish that they would have uh, kind of done some of the uh, backspacer built in, kind of uh, camouflaged um, uh, clips, I guess, something that's kind of built into the end here. That's my preference and my style. But uh, you can't win them all. And uh, I'm telling you right now, this is, uh, you know, in some videos I talk about how 
a great knife is 95% right and the top 5% uh, remaining is the hardest to achieve. Well, I think with these knives we're talking about uh, the next 2 to 3% that you're trying to achieve. It's, it's already 97, 98% of the way there and, and you're just getting tougher and tougher uh, challenges to make it perfection. And, uh, you know, it's, it's getting real close, real, real close. Um, remember earlier I was talking about the tolerances. Look how dead center that is. And you can probably hardly even see it, but there's actually a lip from that back spacer that comes up here. And look how tight that is. That's obscene. Like, isn't that nuts? How on earth... Do you put that into a production? Oh, that's right, you don't. You put it into one of 50 knives in the world, and you have that. That is the closest I've ever seen a shear go off. Um, that gap is usually much bigger, and that's just that attention to detail that I'm talking about. Um, the inset liner lock here. Um, I was watching somebody's video on this knife. It may have been Fab's, but... Uh, the milling work on the inside of these things is just ridiculous. It's on a whole other level for the for the carbon fiber. And they're milling places that you don't even see. You don't even look at. And they're they're putting extra extra additional work in, which is why you get this three ounce knife that you go, oh it's carbon, it's flimsy, or not flimsy, it, you'd think it'd be flimsy, it's carbon, it's three ounces, oh I don't know. It is rock solid. There's no flex on any of it. Zero blade play, zero lock of any kind. It is just smooth as butter. Um, this particular example hasn't even broken in yet. It's still a little bit notchy on the uh, the roller bearings. It's just so smooth and light and solid. And it really makes me scratch my head at why Shir Goroff hasn't taken this size of knife and made it into uh, a production variant. Because as soon as they do that, I, I think they're gonna kill off the neon with that because this is like perfection for size. It is the perfect EDC knife, perfect. Three and a half to three, five eighths kind of blade length. Very thin, very light. I would absolutely buy a variety of this with uh, standard carbon scales. That'd be great. Doesn't have to be carbo tie. Doesn't have to be damascus steel. Give me M390. Give me Chromax for crying out loud. I'll take it. Um, one thing as well that I'm looking at right now, I'm going, okay. Um, so they don't actually thread anything into the uh, into the, uh, the scales here. So everything kind of comes through the hardware, the proprietary, proprietary hardware. Um, AKA a flathead screwdriver, but please don't use that and get the tool. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's threaded into itself here instead of threaded into the frame. Now, another thing you're looking at that going, well, how, how is there, you know, it's an inset liner lock. How is that inside the frame? Where, where is it screwed in? They must screw it in somehow. Um, but nope. See, if you peek under here, there's two more little screws hidden ever so slight under the clip. One being here, and the other just being, I think, right around here. And uh, that's where the liner is actually threaded in and secured inside. Very well done. And, uh, you know, I'll, sh I'll try to show you this. I'll do my best. I'm not the best at showing you this, but I'll try to get some inside of it. Um, if we can see with this little light, the camera wants to adjust, so it's not the greatest but uh, there's lots of extra work in there, despite my inability to show it. Um, you know what, I apologize. You're gonna have to buy one of these to see it. And uh, you gotta leave something. Uh, no, one's, no one's gonna show that for free, I guess. Or if they do, they've got a better camera than I do, which is more likely the case. <laughs> um, I talked earlier, I spoke a little bit about this beautiful um, this beautiful uh, liner lock here that uh, you know the milling work on this is just tremendous very light lock up as well but the details on this um, are just next level tremendous tremendous work very fine milling um, inside maybe you can continue to see inside there I don't know 
Um, you can see the sculpting and extra detail right on this lip here as well. Ooh, it just cut out so nicely, so delicate, the, the work done there. Oh, you're getting that reflection of the blade. You're seeing the work back here as well on the handle. You're starting to kind of see a little bit of the milling with the camera that's it's showing that, right? You can see that detail level. The pocket clip, you can see some extra detail on there. Little milling marks as well. You know, the Dama steel on the flipper tab, that's, you know, almost indistinguishable until you really look close. And then you see all the rolls and the lines in it. Just stunning. Now, a couple things that, uh, you know, we're, we're a bit of a pet peeve on the Stellar model. Um, the jimping. A lot of people weren't a big fan of the jimping on that. So what did they do? Well, they extended it. Now, one thing that I am going to say annoys me about this jimping is that traditionally on a lot of the Shurgoff models, they tend to match the jimping to the backspacer pattern. And I'm not going to show you, I'm not going to go through a bunch of different knives in 21 minutes in, but uh, the spacing tend to match. 3D milling on the backspacer. Uh, in this case they don't match it but they did extend it because the last one had about that much showing on the Stellar and they've uh, probably doubled it to two and a half times and it looks great. It's actually usable. Um, a good knife in my opinion doesn't require jimping um, but in this case I'll, I'll make an exception because it does look and feel absolutely beautiful. Nice and comfortable. Um, ergos, I'm telling you, this is zero hot spots. I could, uh, I, I could swing from monkey bars made of this material. It's super, super solid. Zero flex. Um, it's just, it's carbon fiber. Carbon fiber does not flex, guys. That's, uh, you know, it does not flex. It uh, breaks. Metal flexes. So when it's laid up correctly, it will not flex. And that's just... Just beautiful, absolutely beautiful. The lanyard hole, like I said, leaves a little to be desired, but it's more than made up for having that epoxy little logo in there. Dead center, just a stunner. Um, what else can I say? The roller bearings. They sound great. Has a bit of a high pitch to it, but super smooth controlled. You know, I, I would like to see some standardization on when I say to you guys, that um, you know, it's it's easy. It's very light to to move the blade out, and it, it's it's hard to kind of say like you know you control the swing of the blade obviously by the strength of the detent, and when you have the strength of the detent high, the blade will not move around when you shake it. Right? When it's low, you can shake the knife and you tend to release the blade. This thing is solid. It's not going anywhere. There's no rattling, nothing. But the force to, to eject the blade, it's so light. Like it's less force to launch or something. I don't know what you'd classify that as, but like it comes out so easy and the blade is light on its toes. Like, oh. You know, I was speaking with a fella going through this where he, uh, got his first custom division knife and uh you know from initial reactions anyway it seems like he's absolutely floored with it and uh you know i've got a case of knives beside me here all the big brands koenig um you know um what's the heck this one is you know koenig grimsmo's shergoros demko's um hinderers um browns uh, even this one, actually, this is my coolest, latest find, uh, the the Pyrenees, down the road from me, it's made, a couple hours, love that knife, I had a video on that one, check it out, um, but I'll, I'll say this, like, these roller bearings, plus this aerospace level of refinement, creates an experience when you first hold one, and you first feel one in your hand, that is unmatched, and even custom knives in this territory, where, you know, table on this one, I think it came out was 1700-ish US, something in that, maybe 1800. And, um, you know, they're easily going for double that currently. And uh, with no sign of slowing down, I should add. Um, you know, you're probably 
later in the year, you, I think we'll cross the 4,000 US mark on uh, on mint condition ones like this. Um, you'll, you'll start to see that, no problems. Um, you already seen that with like the turtle and the quantum minis and stuff. The quantum mini is a little different though because you're there's less of them out there. But as the market flushes out another 30 or so, um, you'll see that kind of come back down to 4,000, I think. But absolutely tremendous example of a, a beautiful knife. Just that force open, so smooth, controlled. You know, I always, I always do this in my videos. I'll put the blade up to show you the angle for one. Put it up to 90 degrees and uh, just kind of show you how it won't fall on its own. Almost anywhere in it, it is controlled. It will not fall. Until right at the end, the detent will take over and then Boop, there it goes. But in hand, see how controlled that was? It was nice and solid in hand. Like, literally, just a little move. Look, that's it. It's incredible. That's like, this is unlike anything in the collection. Um, sure, Goroff in the custom division. Uh, or, you know what, let's, let's call it CD, cash deprived. I think that's what I'm going to call it, cash deprived. That makes a lot more sense than custom division. Once you buy one of these, you're cash deprived. Um, they are doing something so special with the aerospace grade tolerances, with the materials that are just premium luxury materials. Uh, in this case, a very dressy knife. But um, there is not a single detail on this knife that has not been looked at in great detail. Everything from the, you can light switch, you can you can gently roll it. It's all milled out and comfortable in here. There's no sharp edges around the frame of the perimeter. It's just stunning. And and I'm telling you guys, first of all, I am so biased. I am a Shirogorov whore and uh, I still get giddy like a schoolboy when I get to hold a CD and get to feel one and experience it, and uh, and get to help others experience it, and um, and and get to show them that you know that two thousand dollar or three thousand dollar knife you have will soon feel like a production knife compared to this, uh, not this but to other custom division knives because the standard just it gets so much better without you even really realizing how much better it can get so um, yeah anyway lots of little details on this one um, I'm looking at the timer I'm at 28 minutes and uh, I don't know why I'm at 28 minutes this needs to be a five minute video given the information I provided but um, lots of cool work on this I love it I love it and uh, I, I sometimes I just feel like I don't know if I'm getting that across in a video or not but uh, I'm an absolute nut for these. And I would really like to try uh, a couple more custom division knives. Uh, I'm currently looking to track down a, an F95T custom division, an F3NS custom division. Um, you know, I'd really like to experience a couple of the other full metal variants. I'd like to try a Stellar as well to compare that with this. And as discussed, I've got a Magnetic on the way, which will be very cool to experience as well. But I think I'm gonna leave you guys there. And uh, appreciate you checking out the Stellaris from Shergoroff Custom Division. And uh, look at this, you can like roll the knife. Oh, it's just nuts. Uh, well, appreciate you guys stopping by and checking this out. And if you have any questions, uh, you know, please let me know below. Uh, I feel like I'm these videos are me being a fanboy more than anything. And I apologize about that, but. Uh, it is what I do, and uh, I, pol <laughs> I apologize, but at the same time, I really don't. I just uh, I love showing these knives and giving you guys a taste of uh, some of the really cool things that uh, we get to experience here. So uh, appreciate you guys stopping by and checking this out. Any questions, leave them below. Okay, cheers, guys. Have yourselves a great week, and uh, we'll talk soon and show you some new knives. Okay, later.